let's talk investment banking. What's up guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Andrew and today I want to talk about how I was able to get into the investment banking industry with pretty much zero experience and also coming from a traditionally non-target school. And this video isn't necessarily meant to be a, you know, tips and tricks or guides of how to break into the industry, but this video is more or less to provide as like, you know, potentially motivation or just an inspiration for those who you had interest for finance, but you haven't really done anything within the financial world, but still want to break into the industry. So my story goes a little like this. I was a freshman in college. I was studying at the University of California at San Diego and I was a electrical engineering major. I did a bunch of engineering courses. I joined a bunch of engineering clubs and I did a few engineering internships. And it wasn't until my junior year of college in which I was doing a engineering internship at a defense company. And it was that summer that I really came to realize this wasn't something I was truly passionate about or took a deep interest in. I was never really the guy to go home on a Friday night. I mean, I don't think anyone is, but I was never really the person to go home at night and plug in a circuit board to just see how everything worked. And I kind of decided that I owed it to myself. I wanted to you know, chase after a career path that I really want to do. And in the moment, I was actually pretty lucky because I was going to be taking a fifth year in college to basically finish up some engineering coursework, meaning that I was able to do another summer internship, you know, even after my senior year of college. You know, how I really came across into investment banking was that the, the corporate development side of things really captivated my interest and I ultimately decided that this was a career path that, you know, I want to explore and pursue for the remaining of my college career. So yeah, here I was, it was the summer of 2017, I was a rising senior in college and I decided that I'm going to pursue investment banking. I had no experience, I knew nothing about the industry. I never taken a class in business before. I didn't know any about accounting. I didn't know any about finance. And on top of that, I didn't really know any alumni in the industry and more so than that, our school was a non-target. And I don't want to get too much into the whole thing argument about like target versus non-target schools. But I will say coming from a target school does benefit you in a certain ways of like your school sets you up with the right resources in terms of interview prep, having the right alumni connections, and the most important part, your school also like have banks come to your university to do on-campus interviews and such that my university unfortunately did not have at that point in time. And at this point, I was at a stage where I couldn't even name you the three financial statements if I wanted to. You can literally ask me like, oh, what are the three financial statements in 2017? And I'll just, I'll, I'll probably just drop blank. I'll be like, I, I don't know, what's an income statement? And these are very simple financial concepts that I think most people probably know, but I, I, I didn't know anything about accounting or finance back in 2017. The only thing I, ha I really had going for me at that point was a decently good GPA and also this, I want to call it like a foolish ignorance that I can break into this industry against other people who basically have been prepping to get into investment banking since um, freshman year of college or something. But nonetheless, I still got to work and decided that I will spend the next three months of my July summer in 2017 basically studying for investment banking and trying my best to get into this industry. I was able to get my hands on certain banking guides out there and try to learn all the technical aspects about the banking job as quickly as I could. I networked with as many people as I could. I was emailing people all over on LinkedIn, trying to get on a phone call with them just to learn more about the industry and hopefully try to get an interview out of it as well. At this point, I was also going to many different recruitment events that other school had. I was in Southern California, so I went to a lot of USC events. Um, I basically just snuck into their info sessions or networking events and just started to meet a bunch of people saying like, hey, I don't go to school, but I love to talk to you and hopefully we can get something going here. Um, but ultimately that didn't really amount to anything as well, but it was a good learning experience for me to basically get myself out there and start talking to bankers to get more used to lingua and how to basically sell myself to these guys. And you know what happened after three months? Nothing, I, absolutely nothing. I. I Pretty much three months later, I maybe had two interviews at this point, two phone screens, not even interviews, like just phone screens that I completely bombed or they just didn't really go anywhere. 
And most people that I was speaking with at this point told me that, you know, in a sense that I was wasting my time, that I should have decided that I wanted to do investment banking earlier. And at this point, it was too late to get in since I was already a rising senior coming from an on-target school with no relevant experience. Um, they told me that the best thing I could do is to do a few years of engineering and then get my MBA to pivot into the industry using the MBA path. Now we are in October of 2017. I had two first round interviews that went nowhere. I'm getting very tired of just the whole recruitment. It's, it's been a very discouraging time and kind of unmotivated at this point since I feel like none of my efforts were really amounting to anything and I almost felt like I was wasting my time uh, recruiting for investment banking. And I was actually speaking to one of my mentors at this point and what he told me was one thing I was doing wrong was I was only reaching out to analysts and associates and he really recommended me that I start reaching out to VPs, directors, and managing directors only since those are people with hiring power and analysts and associates unless you're a come from St. school as them or you have a very impressive resume, most of the time they probably won't push your resume along to get the interview. So in that moment, I kind of had this moment of realization that like, oh my God, it's October. Most of the banks were already filling up all their analyst classes. If I don't try to get a position or interview within the next few weeks, I'm probably not getting into the banking industry. Like right? it's just that simple. Like I'm not going to be getting a banking internship next summer. So I, basically sent as many emails as I could to any MDs, VPs, directors all around the United States. Like I'm talking about every major city that had like an investment banking operations. I probably sent an email to. And at last, a VP replied to me from an investment bank based in Minneapolis, uh, the most random place in the US. And the only reason he replied to my email is because I happened to intern at a medical firm that he used to do business development at. So I was able to write that in email say we had this common simil similarity in our careers and that we should talk on the phone. <laughs> and he agreed to it. And I was able to hop on the phone with him and the conversation actually went pretty well. And what ended up happening was he actually referred me to the investment bank San Francisco location. And what happened the next day is that the HR person reached out to me on a Wednesday and she basically said, hey, we're having our last super day this Friday, two days from wh wh when we're talking right now. Would you like to join the super day? And of course I said yes. So basically what happened was I, I had to fly out the exact next day, stay overnight at a hotel and do the interview that Friday. And I remember that morning when I was going to do the banking interview, like I remember eating at a McDonald's right in downtown San Francisco and you know I it was it was a moment in which I felt genuinely pretty excited but also very nervous and just happy you know also happy that I made it this far you know at that point regardless of how the interview would have gone I was proud of myself for putting myself out there and basically going after something that I wanted regardless of you know what the percentage is and what the chances of me landing something like this was. And I remember walking into the building and seeing all the glass walls, the tall pillars, and it was basically like a scene of the show Suits. Um, and it was, it was everything I ever imagined what a vest and bang would look like on inside. And I did the interview, and the interview lasted from around 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. It was about, I don't know, four, four-ish hours. But I remember walking out the building. I walked out the building and I get a phone call 10 minutes after I walk out the building. And I pick up the phone and it was the HR. And she said, Andrew, the team was very impressed with you during the interviews and we'd like to offer you a summer analyst position for our last slot for our analyst class next summer. Do you know that scene from The Pursuit of Happiness when Will Smith finally got the offer to be a stockbroker in San Francisco and he was just walking around downtown, clapping his hands, being super happy? Like that was me, that was me in that moment. <laughs> I was walking around downtown San Francisco just 
so glad that everything was over and everything I've done up to this point finally paid off. And I do understand that there are many people out there who have recruited for investment banking much longer than I did. So I, don't, I really don't want to put this as a comparison of like, oh, my story was so difficult. But I definitely do think that my story is something to tell since I think it establishes that a lot of times when you think something's impossible, it usually is a mental block you have to just gotta get over. Cause once you start doing it, you'd be surprised how much you can accomplish in such a short amount of time. And I, did, I think the main lessons and key takeaways from my journey of breaking the investment banking is one, Sometimes you just gotta try things. You never know what's gonna happen if you don't, if you just try it. And I knew that personally, I could live myself that I tried to break into industry and failed rather than never having to try at all. Number two is try to stay foolish and ignorant about the statistics as long as you can. Since once you learn about the actual metrics and numbers of whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, whether this is getting into investment banking or pursuing a career or a certain like you know pursuing anything that you want to do that has a very very low percentage try to stay foolish as long as you can and don't think too much about the numbers because the numbers are just going to put you down and number three basically to find your competitive advantage you know while i thought that studying engineering and a lot of the internships that i was doing was a waste of time what ended up happening was that this one random internship that I did my sophomore year of college at a medical company in Dallas, Texas, actually came back to help me because the VP I spoke with would never could agree to connect with me if we haven't worked at the same company. So you never know what you've done in the past will come up again as your competitive advantage. So never think that anything you do is a waste of time. Anyway, that about wraps up today's video. Please let me know if you guys enjoyed the video or if you guys have any type of comments or feedback for me. I'd love to you know read through all of them. But aside from that, I hope to see you guys all next time.